Since Retke's death in 1963, Saginaians have done a number of things to show their appreciation for Retke and for the poetry he left with us. Less than four years after his death, Pat Shack and her friends at the Friday Book Club decided to try something original. They decided to honor the memory of Saginaw's lost son by establishing a memorial award in his name. No other town in the United States had such an award. The women of the Friday Book Club also organized what they called an evening with Ted Redke, and it turned out to be a great success. On what would have been Ted's 59th birthday, the Friday Book Club and more than 100 of their guests met at the Saginaw Country Club to have dinner and cocktails with visiting writers John Chiardi, Donald Hall, Stanley Kunitz, and Alan Seeger. These writers came to Saginaw to celebrate their friend. After the dinner, the group made their way to Arthur Hill for the event at 8.30. The high school stage was loaded with crimson geraniums in clay pots and white lattice arches stretched across the back of the stage. Redke's boyhood tennis partner, Burroughs Morley, began by announcing that the first Theodore Redke Memorial Poetry Prize would be awarded in 1968. He then introduced the speakers to 1,400 enthusiastic listeners. Seger, Seeger, who had just finished writing the biography of Redke, sketched Ted's life story. Then Kunitz reminisced on his friendship with Ted and made comments on Ted's growth as a poet. Chiardi read a poem he wrote for the occasion on his way to Saginaw. The three of them then took turns reading a few of Ted's poems, including The Geranium, I Knew a Woman, Big Wind, The Meadow Mouse, and The Lost Sun. On behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee, Morley announced that Redke would be included in the Saginaw Hall of Fame at the Castle Museum on Federal Avenue. Morley then passed along the greeting to the crowd sent by Governor and Mrs. Romney. Finally, Morley read the telegram sent by Beatrice Redke, who had asked Seeger to write the biography of her husband. She said, My husband remained tied to Saginaw and to Michigan throughout his life, as I think his work demonstrates. Having recognition there would have meant more to him than anything. During his visit to Saginaw, Rethke's friend and fellow poet from his earlier days of teaching, Stanley Kunitz, was interested in seeing sites of Saginaw Rethke had been familiar with. Marty Oming took Kunitz to Rethke's burial place at Oakwood Cemetery. I had no idea where he was buried, but Four years later, in 1967, there came a wonderful project in mind, and that was to celebrate the fact that Theodore Redke is Saginaw's own poet. And he writes about it very often and with great and tender understanding. So a great evening was planned, an evening with Theodore Redke and many of his then contemporary friends, other great poets, were invited to honor the evening. And one of the ones that was invited is the poet, the American poet Stanley Kunitz. And when he accepted, he asked if he could have a short tour of the places that were in his friend's life. And he wanted to see his grave. I was the one given the task to meet Stanley Kunitz at the airport. So I arranged what turned out to be the very first of the Retke tours. And coming from the airport, we started here. We drove to the cemetery where I had previously found Ted Stone. And I was very pleased to find when I looked myself that Ted's stone was also near the Burroughs stone and the Morleys over there a little way. 
Pat Sheck continued working with friends at the Friday Book Club to raise funds for the Theodore Retke Memorial Foundation. The only purpose of this foundation is to receive and hold money that will eventually be given to the winner of the Theodore Retke Memorial Poetry Prize. Poets around the country praised the effort and contributed money. Robert Lowell, Louise Bogan, Alan Tate, Lillian Hellman, W.D. Snodgrass, and many others were glad to see Retke honored. Robert Penn Warren wrote, unless I am misinformed, Saginaw will be the first American town or city to take such a step to honor a poet. Grant money from the State Council for the Arts helped as well. In May of 1968, one year after the evening with Ted Retke, the first Theodore Retke Memorial Poetry Prize was ready to be awarded. Burroughs Morley was there again to emcee the event, and Carolyn Kaiser served as a guest speaker. The award of $3,000 went to Howard Nemirov for his collection of poems titled Blue Swallows. The Poetry Prize is given every three years to a living poet published in English. Each time, the winners have received $3,000. Other winners include Donald Finkel, Robert Penn Warren, John Ciardi, Richard Hugo, Carolyn Kaiser, and Kim Ko Han. Other local Redkey fans organized a program for the Humanities Lecture Series sponsored by Saginaw Valley State University. In October of 1991, at the Reuben Daniels Lifelong Learning Center in downtown Saginaw, Fred Brown, Robert Leese, and Matthew Brown read selections of Retke's poems. Kay Brown sang her interpretations of three of Retke's poems, while Mark Jonas accompanied her on guitar. And Marty Oming recounted Retke's biography and shared insights to his poetry. She also played portions of the black and white video in a dark time. The evening's events were videotaped and a copy is available for checkout at Hoyt Library. Thank you and it's wonderful to see you here. Uh, we have had some evenings to honor Theodore Redke before in this valley, but tonight we're going to fall in love with him together. The program was named The Lost Son, The Poems of Theodore Retke. That's the title of this evening's event, and it's taken from one of Retke's poems. It's also the title of one of his published books of poetry. But The Lost Son has many other possible meanings. One would refer to Retke's lifelong search for resolution with his feelings about his father, who died when Retke was in his early teens. But I think the meaning we will adopt for tonight is the fact that Ted Retke has been one of Saginaw's own lost sons, unknown to us in the most profound sense of the words. We all know a little of him and his nature, but tonight we will allow his own voice, found in the themes of his poetry, to reveal more 